What's up guys, I'm John. I'm the owner over here at Advanced Fiberglass Concepts. And today we're gonna take you through the process of what it takes to bring a Bronco Raptor kit to life. A lot of customers think we can just snap our fingers and bam, it's to life because there's 3D printing now, CNC machining, but to make the product takes a lot of work. You have 3D scanning, reverse engineering, CAD design, CNC machining, prepping the plug for tooling, making the tooling, and then prepping the tooling for production. And last but not least, part validation. So installing it on the vehicle to sign off on everything and finally to make those orders as well. So we're gonna start this series. It'll be called How It's Made by ADV and let's get started. So the first step is you're either going to need a 3D scan file or OEM data from the manufacturer. Ford does not release data for the Raptor, unfortunately. So we have to go through the 3D scanning process. After the part is 3D scanned, we have to reverse engineer it so it's a smaller file. When you 3D scan any component, what the 3D scanner does is it's basically tracking the surface and inputting it into the computer with millions of triangles. So the files are extremely large in size. When you 3D scan an entire vehicle, it's too big of a file to actually work with. So you take it a step farther. You have to reverse engineer the scan file. So those millions and millions of triangles, you're gonna redraw the factory surface. Once you have the factory surface drawn, is then when you can actually use the data to design your own product line as well. So last scene, we showed you guys 3D scanning in the third shop of ours. We have it on the computer right now. So I'll show you the scan data, and then we're also gonna show you the reverse engineered data as well. We only use the reverse engineered data. So we make it actually bodied surfaces, which is also known as NURBS, N-U-R-B-S. So I'll flip the camera around. And I'm gonna show you guys the computer screen and show you how much work it takes to actually convert these scans to working data for our designer to use. On the screen right here, I'm showing you the scan data of the panel we just scanned. Like I mentioned earlier, it's a millions and millions of triangles to actually get the detail that the panel has. So if I zoom in, you guys can see there's just tons and tons of triangles that actually make out the shape and texture of the part itself. But this panel is so large. Between these two pieces right here, it's 127 megabytes and 54 megabytes. So that's just one side of scan. If you take into account the entire vehicle, it's gonna be a couple gigabytes, which is way too large. So once you actually reverse engineer the file and make it working surfaces, it's a lot smaller of a file. So we're only at 17 megabytes, which is more doable to work with. So you guys can see right here, this is a clean surface that has been reverse engineered. There's no more triangles, it's just bodied surfaces it's a lot easier for the designers to work with. And it's also better so we can get the correct mounting locations because the scan data is kind of look a little iffy at times. Now that we have all of our files reverse engineered, we can take these files, pass it off to our CAD designer, and he's now gonna design our 4.5 inch Bronco Raptor fenders, fender liners, rear quarter kit, and rear liners as well. The Bronco Raptor was definitely a difficult vehicle to design for. The front end, wasn't very hard. It's moving towards that rear quarter panel. We're used to designing bedsides that are, let's say six feet long, and now we have to shrink it down to three feet. Along with that, we usually only do about a four and a half inch flare for the bedsides. The Bronco Raptor comes factory 7.5 inches wider. So on this kit, we're gonna do a 4.5 inch version. So it'll be three inches slimmer than the factory width. That way you get that tire poke, more aggressive stance, cleaner lines as well. So when we started designing the kit, we took our design inspiration from the standard Bronco product line, our two inch, five inch and eight inch kit. We wanted that molded in flare. That way there wasn't a line the factory flare has currently. So on our 4.5 inch kit, we took design inspiration from the, the kit we already did for the Bronco, but also the Bronco Raptor line. So we have a smooth line that transitions from the fender into our flare itself, which looks extremely clean. When we designed the kit, we had a great idea along the entire process. Where we ran into hiccups was the gas pod. So this is the actual Bronco Raptor gas pod. You'll notice 
the door ends right down here and there's still this exposed piece of plastic. So when this goes inside the factory Bronco Raptor panel, it actually sits pretty nice and tight in there. Then you see there's a line that follows all the way across. This is where that rear flare attaches to. So the difficulty is we don't have a secondary rear flare that attaches to the panel. We had to hide this section right here because if we made our opening this large, this plastic would be exposed on our design, which would look awful. It was not up for discussion. We had to figure out how to get this to be hidden. So basically what we did instead, we have just this opening from here to here. We have a secondary bracket that sits on the back side and it gets glued to the back of the panel. So that actually gas pod only shows the door and it looks incredibly clean. It was no easy task, but we spent the time to make sure we got it right. Now that the part is all finished, it's been designed, we take into account panel thickness. We make sure the thickness of the rear quarter panel and the liners are correct. We offset that so the liner can sit directly on top of the material. We make sure all A surfaces are also touching. On top of that, now we are gonna go ahead and block out the parts. As you can see right here, we have screenshots of the exact size of the, the panel itself on the machine. We also have the thickness, so how much foam is required to make this piece. Once we block it out, we'll put it in the computer, we'll CNC program it. The cool thing about this program is it's called Autodesk Power Mill. We can simulate every single action the machine will take in the computer. So if we think it's gonna crash, Power Mill will actually identify those crashes before it happens and we can adjust that in the computer before we start the actual machine. This panel right here, just in the foam will cost us thousands and thousands of dollars. So we have to ensure that we don't crash the machine and ruin the foam. So right next to me, we have the finished rear quarter panel. In the previous scenes, we showed you guys the actual plug being machined down. This originally started as one big block of foam. So just picture, no detail, just a block that comes all the way here, all the way there. It goes onto the machine. It's usually propped up about 12 inches off the table of the machine. That way the machine can come at a full B90 all the way down and get all the detail that we need in these regions. If the part is positioned on the table, the machine, when it comes down, it will hit a limit or it'll hit the table and cause it to crash. So by lifting it off the actual table, we're able to get all the detail. The way it works is you first start by breaking down the material called the roughing toolpath. So we use a two inch rougher to break down the material. Then we do a one inch to get even finer detail. To get the final, final detail of this section right here, we do a steep and shallow tool path with a three quarter inch ball nose. So it takes very, very fine step downs and step overs to get the detail that we have right here. Finally, we finish off with corner multi-pencil finish. So all these sharp corners, it'll take an even finer tool, a 16th tool, and carve out those, those corners to get all the detail that we need. You can see the part is right here and we have flanges as well. We actually flange all of our parts in the computer. The reason that we do that is you get the perfect mating surface between flanges. If you were to hand flange this part, when you hand flange parts, there's always a variation and a deviation. So by doing it in the computer, you know the tolerance of the machine is between three and five thou. So these two flanges are gonna meet up as close to perfect as possible. It's a really cool process, but you can see that this part in front of me has already been prepped. We've already pulled one mold off of it. So we have some small repair spots as well. The way that we prep these plugs is we lightly sand it. Then we put primer on top, which is a Chemtrend product. You simply soak the surface with the primer. It builds up. You wet sand it as well so you get a nice smooth finish. And lastly, you're going to add the release. Once the release is added, then you're ready to make the tools. So we're going to show you guys these tools in particular in the back of the shop. So right in front of me, we have the Bronco 4.5 inch rear quarter panel. The rear quarter kit consists of the panel itself, a door cap that sits right here, as well as a rear bumper trim. An upgrade we offer would be the fender liners that sit right in the section right here as well. What I showed you guys a second ago was the actual foam plug. And I also mentioned how the flanges sit nice and perfect against each other. So this is a removable part. The reason that this is removable is because if you picture, 
if this was all one mold, we can't pull the part out of the mold. We have to remove this flange first, that flange second to actually get the part out of the mold. So all of these lines you see right here, which we call pardine lines, you have to clean up. So sand down, add Bondo, paint them, make them look nice and clean. That way when we send it off to the customer, all they have to do is sand, prime, and paint the part as well as install it too. But if you see, when I place the flange down below right here, it just clips in place. We have positioning targets that are all right here. So it locks into place. And then on top of that, we have bolts that also hold the flange down in position. We'll get a close up in a second and you guys can see how nice and tight the actual flange line is. So in essence, once the mold is finished, we prep it, wet sand it to a thousand grit, polish it, wax it, get it ready for production. At that point, we can now prep for gel coat. So we're in the gel coat room right now. They tape off all unnecessary flange edges. This is called a runoff. Then they'll spray these separately, put them together, pass it off to our lamination department, which will then lay up the part. It'll sit and dry overnight. We will demold it usually at 18 to 24 hours pass it off to the grinding department. They will finish up, clean up all the edges, and then pass off to quality control to get a green light and either ship out, pick up, or have us install it for the consumer. So right next to me, we have the very first Bronco Raptor install with the 4.5 inch fenders and fender liners. We're halfway through the install right now. So you're gonna see, we don't have the trail side installed. That'll get installed very, very soon. But the good thing is, the whole entire process that we followed, 3D scanning, reverse engineering, designing in CAD, flanging in the computer as well, and CNC machine on an aerospace quality machine gets us perfect lines in the door right here, perfect lines in the hood right here, perfect lines all across here as well. The gaps are consistent. And the reason they're consistent is because we take extreme measures to make sure that all of our gaps are the right amount in between the hoods, in between the doors, and make a good quality part. We spend a lot of money on our product line. So we have to really take into consideration, is there gonna be a good return on the product? The Bronco in particular is a great product line for us. So we are going to invest money into building our Bronco Raptor product line. That includes this 4.5 inch kit, as well as the upcoming 7.5 inch kit. We will do a video on that as well at a later date. The 7.5 inch will match the exact width of the factory flares that normally come on the Bronco Raptor. But it was awesome taking you guys through the entire process. Thank you again for watching the first episode of How It's Made by ADV. Make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And if there's anything that we do that you want to see us do, we'll record some content. So put that down in the comments down below. So thank you again.